Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. As leather crafters, we don't really deal with large equipment, but nonetheless, there are a number of tools that we use in our shop that we've got to keep an eye on. We want to keep our shop safe for us and our visitors. Let's start in my shop. A drill press can be a huge help to us in our shop, and for so many reasons. In fact, we've actually got a video, seven ways to use our drill press on leather craft projects. But like any piece of equipment with moving parts, we've got to be careful. The biggest problem here, loose clothing. And the top of the list there, a tie. Here's exactly what I'm talking about. Did you see how fast that went south on us? Think if our arm were in a sleeve, or worse, we're wearing a pair of gloves and that drill bit gets a bite of glove, we're going to have a serious issue. So we need to be careful around our, our equipment, anything with moving parts. But the bigger point here, anybody that's in our shop with us, we just need to be mindful. In a standard shop, we don't have a lot of dangerous liquids. We've got antiques and top coats and whatnot but there are a few that are highly flammable, very dangerous, and we need to keep an eye on these. Well, right off the bat, the cement thinner, I love this. For us crafters, it's hard to use up a full bottle of contact cement before it starts to thicken, becomes unusable. A little thinner in that, and we can use that glue literally right to the bottom. Highly flammable. Deglazer, another great product. This will take a top coat off of a piece of leather so we can re-dye it or re-top coat it. But again, highly flammable. Now in the last shot, I didn't mention it, but you might have seen behind me, I keep my alcohol, my acetone, thinner, deglazer. I keep all of that in one spot away from everything else in the back corner. So it's out of reach, it's out of touch. To me, that's the safest way to store these. This one is just from experience. It may seem like a no-brainer, but you'll see where I'm going with this. So a good pair of shoes in our shop. We don't have to have a pair of work boots by any means. We're not dealing with any major equipment, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Have you ever walked through your shop barefoot or maybe say with your socks on and step on a spot? Oh, you know that pain. And these are so easy to break off from the main herd. They're small, they're hard to see. Well, a thin soled shoe really not a problem in a shop and not really where we're going. The point here is in an open-toed shoe or maybe a sandal or flip-flop. Here's the problem, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but I have dropped every one of these tools more than once. And an art knife, I don't know how this works, but if I drop this five times, four times it's going to stick into whatever it falls on, and I'm hoping that's not my foot. So a good pair of sneakers is great in our shop. Not too heavy, comfortable, but they are going to give us some protection against, say, a wound that isn't necessary. Let's keep our shop safe and healthy because the majority of the liquids we use are going to require some good ventilation. I've got a nice big shop and I don't have a paint booth. Now I do have a window at both ends so I can get a good cross breeze through here but a number of projects or products like the satellite, this is my favorite top coat, I have to use this outside. That is extremely strong. Same with the deglazer. Now I will deglaze on my work table but in my opinion, the best way to go is let's get some deglazer on the rag, deglaze our project, then take the rag outside and let that dry outside. That way we get virtually no fumes in our shop. Now, on the pro dyes, we need some good ventilation here. It's not necessarily dyeing, it's the product after we dye because the fumes are going to come off of that project about two, maybe three hours. So if we don't have great ventilation, try this. This seems to work for me. So I'm going to dip dye. Let's take our bin, pour our dye in our bin, let's run our panel or panels through the bin, set them aside. Let's immediately clean out the bin, dye back in the bottle, clean the bin with a paper towel. Well, by now, our panels have had, had enough time to dry to where we can move them. Now, let's if we've got a pretty day, let's take them outside. Let them dry out there. Again, that's where our fumes are. Well, if we don't have a nice day, we can always go to, say, our garage or our attic, someplace that's going to be out of the way so that those fumes can remain. The worst problem is if our shop is connected to our house and those fumes get in the house, we're never going to hear the end of that one. But again, let's just keep a good eye on our ventilation with our liquids.
This is just my opinion, but based on years of experience, there are three tools in our shop we've got to watch out for. Well, the round knife or a head knife goes without saying, but that's a great tool. The two that are going to sneak up on us right here, the hand skiver or a skife knife, because of the way the handle's made, notice where we want to put our finger. There's our blade right there, wide open and exceptionally sharp. Right here, the rotary knife. This is a great knife for the lighter weight leathers, say for our chromes or something that's a little bit more supple because the blade rolls. But the most common and most severe wounds I have seen in leather craft are from this tool. Well, let's see if this helps. Now, I use a box knife on everything. The retractable blade, that's a big help to me. But even this isn't perfect. The other night, I had my knife on my table. I didn't retract my blade. I put some strapping on it. Grabbed the strapping and my blade got a pretty good cut out of that. And also right here, this is one of my straight edges from my shop. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but right here there's a cut that stops abruptly right there. It stopped abruptly because that was my thumb, stopped in my thumb. So we've got to be careful of our knife jumping our straight edge. So try this, see if this helps. Let's try to keep our hand always behind our knife. So right here I've got a straight edge and I'm going to get a good cut going. But notice I'm going to keep my hand behind my knife. Well, I've still got good pressure on my straight edge, but my hand is always behind my cutting blade. And there we are. We get a clean, safe cut. Unlike a wood shop, or maybe say a metal shop, we just don't have the need for the larger equipment. But nonetheless, there's still ample room for error if we're not paying attention. Let's keep our shop safe for us and for our visitors who are always welcome. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.